Have you ever wondered how to get a perfect credit score? Is it a myth or a reality? These questions have likely crossed your mind at some point. The idea of achieving an immaculate credit score of 850 might seem like the stuff of legends, akin to finding a unicorn in your backyard or pulling Excalibur from a stone. But, would it surprise you to learn that it's not as mythical as you might think? In reality, getting a perfect credit score is not only possible but also within reach for many Americans. And we're not just pulling this out of thin air. There's tangible, statistical evidence supporting this claim. An Experian study conducted in 2021 found that 1.3% of all credit-holding Americans had a FICO score of 850. If you do the math, that's a significant number of people who've managed to achieve this financial feat. But how did they do it? Well, it wasn't through some secret arcane knowledge or a magic spell. It's about demonstrating exemplary financial behavior consistently over time. This involves making payments on time, keeping a low credit utilization ratio, and maintaining a long history of credit accounts. So if you've ever felt discouraged or believed that a perfect credit score is an unattainable dream, it's time to shift your perspective. While it's true that it requires dedication, discipline, and a keen understanding of how credit works, the journey towards 850 is not a mythical quest. It's a realistic goal that you can strive for with the right strategies and habits in place. So, it's not a myth. Now let's explore how to achieve this coveted score. This journey may seem daunting, but remember, every long journey begins with a single step. And that first step starts with understanding that a perfect credit score is not a myth, but a reality that is within your grasp. One of the secrets of the 800 Club is paying your credit card bills often. Now you might be thinking, but I pay my bills monthly, isn't that enough? Well, let's delve a bit deeper. When it comes to credit, frequency is your friend. Imagine this, instead of waiting for that monthly statement to come in, you pay off your credit card every week. This means you're less likely to carry a balance. And it keeps your credit utilization, a key factor in your credit score, low. It's like taking a scenic drive instead of racing to the finish line. You're still getting to your destination, but you're doing it in a way that's better for your financial health. And the best part? This isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. You can adjust the frequency to suit your lifestyle bi-weekly, weekly, or even daily payments, find what works for you. Remember, the frequency of your payments can make a significant impact. Your payment history is a major player in your credit score. You've probably heard this before and it's because it's true. This isn't just about keeping your word or meeting obligations, it's about demonstrating financial responsibility. And let's face it, who doesn't want to be seen as responsible? So how big of a player is payment history? Well, it makes up a whopping 35% of your FICO score. Yes, you heard that right. More than a third of your score is determined by whether you pay your bills on time. This is why it's crucial to always pay on time and never miss a payment. Think of it this way. If you were a teacher, would you give the best grade to a student who only shows up to class on time 35% of the time? No, right? The same goes for credit score companies. They reward those who consistently show up and pay on time. Keeping up a solid payment history is a non-negotiable step towards a perfect score. A diverse credit portfolio can be a boon to your credit score. Just as a balanced diet is essential for a healthy body, a mix of different types of credit can contribute to a robust credit score. This concept, known as credit diversity, is one piece of the credit score puzzle that often goes overlooked. Credit diversity doesn't mean taking on debt for the sake of it, but rather demonstrating your ability to manage a variety of credit types responsibly. This might include a mix of credit cards, retail accounts, installment loans, finance company accounts, and mortgage loans. Think of it as a financial orchestra, where each instrument or type of credit plays its own unique part. When played in harmony, these various forms of credit can create a symphony of financial responsibility that sings to credit score companies. But here's the catch. Credit diversity makes up only 10% of your FICO score. While it's important, it's not worth taking on new loans or debt that you can't manage, Always remember the golden rule of credit. Never borrow more than you can afford to repay. Just as you wouldn't add a tuba to your orchestra just for the sake of it, you shouldn't take out a loan or open a credit card just to diversify your credit. Each new line of credit should serve a purpose and fit within your overall financial strategy. And be mindful of the tempo. Opening too many new accounts too quickly can raise red flags for lenders and potentially lower your credit score. So, like a maestro conducting an orchestra, control the pace at which you add new credit to your portfolio. In the grand score of your financial life, 
Good habits are more important than hitting a perfect 850. Making on-time payments, keeping a low credit utilization ratio, and maintaining a long history of credit accounts are the melodies that matter most. So while credit diversity can help boost your score, it's just one instrument in your financial orchestra. The most important thing is to keep the music playing smoothly, responsibly, and in tune with your financial goals. When it comes to credit diversity, balance is key. A higher credit limit can be a stepping stone to a perfect credit score. This is because a larger limit can help you keep your credit utilization ratio low. Think of it this way. If you have a credit limit of $1,000 and you spend $500, you've utilized 50% of your available credit. But if your limit is $2,000 and you spend the same amount, your utilization drops to 25%. But here's the caveat. A higher credit limit doesn't mean you should spend more. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You should aim to keep your spending consistent or even lower it if possible. Treat this increased limit as a tool to better manage your credit, not an invitation to embark on a shopping spree. Remember, the goal is to enhance your credit score, not to rack up debt. A higher credit limit is a tool, not an invitation to spend. Your old accounts are more valuable than you think. Now, this might sound counterintuitive. After all, why would you keep an account you're not using anymore? Well, the secret lies in the length of your credit history. It's not just about how well you've managed your credit, but also about how long you've been managing it. You see, the age of your credit accounts makes up a significant 15% of your FICO score. An individual with a perfect credit score of 850 once revealed that his oldest account was over 30 years old. This long-standing history significantly boosted his score. Does this mean you should never close old accounts? Not necessarily. It's all about balance. If an old account is costing you in high fees, you might want to reconsider. But if it's just sitting there, not causing any harm, it might be worth keeping it open. Remember, old is gold, especially when it comes to credit accounts. Stay vigilant with regular credit report monitoring. It's your financial health check, your shield against inaccuracies that may be pulling down your credit score. Imagine finding an unauthorized hard inquiry lurking in your credit report, like a mischievous gremlin causing score dips and signifying potential fraud. This isn't a horror story, but an unfortunate reality for some. It's why rolling up your sleeves and diving into your credit report often is crucial. Remember, your credit report is like a diary of your financial behavior, and sometimes it can contain errors. Maybe it's a wrongly reported late payment or a credit limit that's off. These inaccuracies can hurt your credit score. So take the reins, be proactive, regularly request your credit report from the major bureaus, comb through it meticulously, and dispute any errors you find. Make it a habit, like your Sunday morning coffee. Your credit report is your score's mirror. Check it regularly. Opening a new credit card should be a well-considered decision. It's akin to stepping into a new relationship. Sounds dramatic, right? Well, it's because every time you open a new credit account, the credit issuer takes a peek into your financial life. This peak is called a hard inquiry. Now, hard inquiries are like pesky mosquitoes. They buzz around your credit score, causing it to drop a few points temporarily. This drop might seem insignificant, but remember, when striving for a perfect score, every point counts. So, should you swear off new credit cards altogether? Absolutely not. They can be useful tools in building a robust credit profile. But, it's essential to be selective. Consider your needs, your ability to manage another account, and the potential benefits. In short, be strategic. Be selective and strategic when it comes to new credit cards. After all, it's not about having the most cards, but about using them wisely. We hope you found this guide to achieving a perfect credit score helpful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Liking our videos helps us know what content you find most useful. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We regularly create and share informative videos like this one, to help you navigate the financial world with ease. Remember, your journey to a perfect credit score starts here. So, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. See you in the next video.